Hey everyone, it's Corleone from Lightcast Studios. Welcome back to episode 3. Today we're going to be talking about the timeline. We're going to try to make this as quick as possible because it is uh, a lot to take in, a lot to handle, and so we're going to be as brief as we can to talk about everything. Uh, but we're also going to go in depth on some of the things we didn't talk about in the uh, basic overview. So basically the timeline is where all your layers are selected, where all your layers are saved and stuff like that. As you can see when we color coded it in the project bin in our last video, all the color codes stayed the same and so we know that these are pictures, these are videos, and this is a uh, black solid. If you didn't know how to do that, you click layer, new, solid, and then it'll make a solid layer. And you can see a little folder was made automatically. I didn't make that, it was made automatically. And so now the sol um, solid was also put in the folder and added here. We use solids to, you know, define different things, maybe add a little, like, uh, caption to the video, and stuff like that, and we can add different effects to work with things like that. We have a little, f we have a couple effects on the uh, wildlife video to in to talk about as well. Uh, in the timeline, you can, this is where you work with most everything uh, to add, like, keyframes and stuff like that to your video. And uh, let's talk about this real quick. This is basically the uh, scroll bar and or zoom in, zoom out. It works the same way if you move down here and if you move up there. It all works the same. Let's say you move down and then you want to scroll to another part of the video. Let's say you want to work 25 seconds. But you want to go to 25 seconds and 15 frames. You zoom in more and you find uh, 25 seconds. Uh, we have to zoom in more than that. 10 frames. So about 15 frames is there. It even says it right here. 25 seconds, 15 frames. Now the timeline organizes the uh, video in durations of uh, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So if you look at this and you want to go to a certain point in the timeline, you just double click this. And let's say you want to go to 25 seconds exactly. You click 25 seconds, set the frames to zero, and it will automatically set the uh, frame rate to zero. As you can see, it's exactly on 25 seconds. This little green area right here is the rendered. Um, part of the video, so if you played it, it, it would have had rendered that frame exactly uh, as you can see. And if you go back to it, it'll play regularly as if it was just a regular video. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is all these little things right here, all these little icons and buttons and what they do. This is the solo layer or the solo button where you can solo different layers. So let's say since we have all these layers selected, we want to work with only one layer at a time. So we want to work with the video. We can just solo that layer and we can work with it. We can also work with two layers if we want. We can also use this little um, eyeball to get rid of layers as well. So they kind of work in correspondence to each other, the solo button and the um, video eyeball button, I guess. I just call it the eyeball button. And if your video and or file has audio, or if you import an audio file, the um, video is also given properties of audio. Now each um, layer has its own properties. Since this doesn't have an audio, it doesn't have audio, it only gives you transform properties. And if you added effects, it would give you um, edit effect properties like it did here. If you got rid of effects like that, it would have deleted effects and you wouldn't have eff any effects on the video um, either. Going into the transform properties, there's things like scale, rotation, opacity. Opacity makes the video uh, viewable. So we're going to look at this chrysanthemum real quick. Let's set the opacity down um, by just like bringing that down. As you can see in the composition, it kind of goes up and down. Um, you can set that to 50 or whatever you want. So let's set that to 50. Press enter, and now it's 50% opacity. And let's say you wanted to make the video uh, have that come in at exactly like zero seconds to one second. So at zero seconds. The video will have it at, uh, you know, it'll it'll be completely blank. And then when it comes to one second, you want it to actually become fully clear. So what you need to do is set the time, um, stop time. It sets a keyframe there, which is these little golden things right here, which is what, what the timeline is good for. And then we go to one second, and we want to change the opacity to 100. So from now on, it'll animate the uh, keyframes to make it disappear and appear on the timeline. So very handy thing which is uh, what we're going to be using most of the time when we're editing video and adding effects and stuff like that so you need to learn how to use that as well when you move positions on the composition the position on the uh, timeline also changes you can also change it in the timeline by using the arrows and dragging your mouse around and you can also set um, preset um, areas to like let's say 1096 press enter it'll move a little bit to this to the uh, right and so that that's how that works 
Uh, the timeline works in what are called layers. If I didn't talk about before, as you can see, we have a bunch of different layers. We have uh, the desert picture, we have the chrysanthemum picture, the black solid, and we have the wildlife picture. Now, these are all pictures right on front of each other, but let's just give a little example of how it works. So let's get the uh, desert picture by selecting it by itself, dragging it above this file, and grabbing this file. I'm sorry. Dragging it right here, and let's just put this above the black solid, and so as you can see we have a couple of files and they're all layered above and behind each other so since the de desert layer is in the first um, is the first number it's in the front and the uh, black saw is the second layer so it's behind the desert layer chrysanthemum behind that wildlife behind that so we want to make sure the desert layer is in the front so we want to drag that to the front and let's just move these back up here so we don't get confused later on if you double click them it opens another layer in the composition window uh, so that's why that kept happening. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, the modes and stuff like that. This is the hide, um, the shy button, which hides layers from the timeline. Uh, comp layer, which collapses transformations, since um, you know if this transforms in, it would collapse. I guess I don't really use these buttons. You don't really need to worry about them anyways, because they're not really um, effective or really useful for anything. Um, and if we add in an effect to the uh, wildlife video, let's say we wanted to add a uh, effect, we have to select the layer on the timeline to add effects. And if you don't have anything selected, the effect uh, menu becomes inactive. We're going to add a color correction effect, uh, change color, and so now we can change the color. And now this button pops up at the bottom indicating that there's an effect. You can remove effects and add effects. As you can see, change the hue of the video and stuff like that. And then you can remove it to change the color back and stuff like that. So that's what's important for that. Um, we want to keep that selected. So if we want to work with certain effects, we want to make sure that we have those effects selected and stuff like that. Frame blend, which is a little button that you can use to blend the different frames if your uh, video has a lot of different frames. These are all pictures and solids, so they only have one frame. But since the video has multiple or like hundreds of frames, then we're going to be using the fr frame blend. But we don't really use it anyways. It's only for adding uh, more effects. It interpolates frame contact by weight, weighted blending. A little complicated, we'll talk about that later. Uh, motion blur, which is good for when we're trying to add certain effects to certain parts of the video. Let's say we wanted to add a text and we wanted to make the video blur out so the text would, you know, uh, I guess work with the video. Sounds a little confusing right now, but we'll explain it later on. Um, the adjustment layer, so like if we add an adjustment layer by, by clicking layer, new adjustment layer, then the uh, adjustment layer will be able to okay let's just do it right now layer new adjustment layer and so now we have an adjustment layer and this adjustment layer is good for adding different effects it's kinda of like a null object so let's say we wanted to add a little blur box blur and so when we blur it the adjustment layer uh, blurs everything in the front so all the files that we had on the adjustment layer um, all the effects that we had on the adjustment layer uh, affected everything behind it kinda of like kind of like how layers worked. If we move the adjustment layer behind the black solid, then it will only affect the files behind the black solid. If we moved it behind the chrysanthemum, then it will only affect the wildlife video and things like that. So that's what adjustment layers are for. You can delete that. Next thing we're going to talk about is 3D layers. And so if we select the files for the 3D layers, we can uh, make them into 3D files and stuff like that. And as you can see, it has three little arrows. The little blue one is can't, you can't see is Z. So X is red, green is Y, and Z is blue. So if you move it forward, it'll move it forward. It's a three object, so you can move it around, rotate it, and stuff like that. So that's handy. Um, and that's good for when you're working with cameras and stuff. So if you worked with the camera file, um, you'd have to have a camera selected anyway. So you wouldn't be able to work with that until you have a camera. Um, but we're going to turn that 3D layer off, so that's going to be a really effective tool later on when we're working with like camera angles and things like that. And if we have a 3D environment, that would be very important as well. Mode, so if we're working with alpha modes and stuff like that, let's say we made the black solid, uh, you know, the alpha mode to, to desert, then the uh, black solid would disappear and then the um, desert will be the main focus inside the uh, black solid. The same will apply with the track mat, so I'll show you about that later on. Transparent uh, Transparency, this is what I call for when you have images and you want to import them into the um, project. Let's say you have an image that has a transparent background because it's a PNG file. Maybe it's in a, a Photoshop file that you wanted to add and it, it looked really good as like a little uh, texture. 
but the thing is when you imported it into After Effects, it had a little white background that you didn't want to have there, so like you just wanted to get rid of it. So what you want to do is click Transparency, and it would preserve the transparency that the uh, image already has in, in the code. Now track mat is important for when you want to um, you know, add different effects. It's, it's mainly just an effect thing. So let's say you wanted to give the uh, track mat of the Black Sol the desert effect. So what you want to do is click the desert and you want to give it uh, the alpha mat of the Black Sol. So now the Black Sol will um, appear to have the desert as its track mat. As you can see, it disappears away from the Black Sol and you can stretch it out and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. Let's just turn the alpha mode off, no track mat. That's the same thing with the modes as well. Now parenting, what you want to do, let's say you, you have a couple of files and you have to turn that um, eyeball back on so you can see it. You want to uh, make the black solid a parent to or the uh, child to the wildlife video because let's say if you move the video, you, want the, uh, you don't want to have to move the black solid and line that up all the time so you can make this a parent to the video and when you move the video, the uh, captions or the uh, black solid moves as well. So that's what parents are for, I guess. Um, you can also use this little thing to drag it and lock it with the wildlife and it automatically sets it to wildlife if you use that little, uh, I call it the Indiana Jones uh, whip. And that's about it. Um, other than that, let's say you accidentally turned off track mat or you don't have track mat turned on or some other thing turned on, you only have this. You need to go to the bottom right here and it has expand or collapse different options and now you can see the different modes and track mats and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, leave your comments below because uh, they do help me later on for when, when I make future videos and maybe I can help you as you go along through your process of learning Adobe After Effects. Um, that's about it for uh, the timeline. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I didn't take too long of your time but on our next video we're going to be talking about the composition window. And then, and then after that, in our next the video after that, we're going to be talking about the other tabs and stuff like that, the other panels. And hopefully we'll be able to begin our first project as soon as possible and you guys understand uh, what I'm talking about when I start talking about, like, you know, camera angles and stuff like that. So until next time, this is Lightcast Studios, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.